up guys, Shannon Fox, Foxy TV. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm hanging out in downtown LA at the beautiful Maxwell Dixon Gallery with MJS Productions. Super excited to be coming to you guys with this exclusive feature with actor, producer, and comedian Melvin Jackson Jr. You guys already know him, you love him, you've seen him in a ton of incredible projects like HBO's The Wire and Everybody Hates Chris. I can't wait to sit down, get personal with him, see what he's up to. And in the meantime, hey, make sure you guys visit his Instagram page to check him out, Melvin Jackson Jr. Stay tuned, you guys. I'll be right back. All right, what's up, guys? Shannon Fox. I'm back. I got the incredible Melvin Jackson Jr. in the building. I'm so excited to be sitting down with you. What's going on today? Everything. Thank you for having me. Thank you for hanging out with us, Foxy TV. You know, we've been trying to get together, yes. but I feel like forever, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> we made it happen, finally. Yes, finally. You know, it's always a grind, exactly. especially here in L.A. So I just kind of want to start out by just telling people, like, your background, like, where you came from, who you are, who is Melvin Jackson oh. Jr.? Melvin Jackson Jr., um, first of all, is a man, a person, um, a father um, of three, three boys. And I'm from Washington, D.C. And uh, pretty much I lived overseas for eight and a half years, Pakistan and Turkey. Wow. Um, did track and field, did wrestling, won a gold, gold medal in track and field, um, won a bronze in wrestling, mm -hmm. and just pretty much traveled the uh, majority of my life as a child. And uh, now I'm trying to conquer the entertainment business, um, yeah. starting out managing artists. And now I'm on the other side, you know, writing, producing, acting, and I've um, been doing it for, uh, I've been in business for about 15 years now. Yeah, that's incredible. And I, I was telling you earlier when I was looking at your bio, I was like, God, he's done so much stuff. And I was really impressed. So you started out kind of young yes. when you were managing artists. Yes. So talk about, a little bit about that. Yeah, I started out managing artists when I was about 19. Yeah. Like, first time I... My mid, I towards the middle of of, uh, of college, mm -hmm. and um, I just kind of just you know liked um, music, loved music, wanted to produce. I mm -hmm. feel like I was gonna be like Diddy, you know? yeah. um, <laughs> and I started managing artists, just trying to really you know create opportunities for them. And I just found myself kind of in a um, a position where I was stuck. I wasn't able to go but so far because I'm pushing right. others. Um, I know how far I can go, but. Others can only go but so far. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt a lot of attention was being turned on me and people asking me, what are you doing? What are you doing as a, as, a, as an artist? What is a person? Mm -hmm. And so I just started from going to music and to transi transition into the acting and been doing it ever since and love it. Yeah. So with your music, who are some of your most memorable experiences that you, like, as far as artists? Um, I used to hang out with G-Unit a lot. So I used to be okay. with them, under them, and just seeing how they operate and um, having a conversation with 50 and just seeing how how he operates and I, I was just impressed by some of the things I saw and it takes a lot to be in the music business it's, yeah. it's not an easy situation to be in um, you're gonna have your ups and downs but uh, to see those guys you know get through it and now what they're what he's doing now with like shows like power it just shows you yeah. that you gotta you know you gotta gradually move on to the next phase of your life yeah um, so just being around those guys taught me a lot about just wanting to do more and, and doing it and just how they had like a brotherhood yeah. um, and everybody was like family exactly exactly yeah. I love that so because what I love about you the most Melvin is like I feel like you've had your hand in a little bit of everything right. like you have all around experience from the athletic side to the, the music industry side now fast forward into your acting career because right. that's where what's really impressive so and I was reading in your bio something about you auditioned like a ton of times for The Wire yeah. before you got that role? About 15 times. That is, okay, that yeah. is insane. Yeah. But that, you guys, <laughs> that is some motivation and dedication right there. So talk about that experience, because I think that's well, incredible. Well, it was crazy because I always loved The Wire. That was one of my favorite shows. And I said, I want to get on it. And um, I, I actually got on, I got on as an extra. Like they kept calling me to be an extra, but I didn't want to do that. Cause I was yeah. like, I don't want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. But they kept calling me after the third time. I was like, well, maybe this is God's way of saying, just yeah. do it just to get in there. And I, and I did it, and I was able to like meet Wood Harris, and me and him you know, formed a friendship. And just people were so nice. Mm -hmm. But I saw that, like, how it was as an extra. Like, that's not, you don't get treated the best, yeah. of course. Um, but I think I needed to go to that to, to, to be humble. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, the grind in LA yes. doesn't stop. Hey, stop. <laughs> interview. Um, but yeah, just the, just the, the um, things you gotta go through as an extra. Mm -hmm. And I think I needed to do that to be humble when I got to the situation. So after finally um, landing the role of Bernard on the Wire after 15 um, auditions, I was like, man, I gotta get this. That's so incredible. I'm just not gonna go anymore. But uh, I'm just glad that I finally got the role and it, and it um, did wonders for my career. And mm -hmm. 
and um, able me to to be um, out here doing this, having an interview with you. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Foxy TV. Yeah, <laughs> and I love that because it just shows you know your persistence, and that's a good message that you give to people that want to do what you're doing because you're showing, hey, don't give up. Or, you know, because it took me 15 tries, that doesn't mean that I'm just going to, you know, stop and give up on my dream. Right. So I, I really love that. That's definitely a really positive message. Yeah. And so we were talking about this earlier before the interview. People, you know, still recognize right. you as Bernard yes. from The Wire. So how does that feel? That must be like kind of a proud moment, some bragging rights right there. Right. It's great because <laughs> it just shows you that people are in tune to the show and um, your character never dies and the show never dies. Mm -hmm. So it's like all I have to say is the guy that was getting cell phones, people are like, oh yeah, yeah, they know. And so it's just, it's, it's interesting because you mm -hmm. never know what um, role you play that may change someone's life or impact. has it, yeah, exactly, has an impact. So when people are able to say, listen, man, I love what you're doing. I'm mm -hmm. a fan of your work. I'm a fan of the show. Like that just shows us that that means well, we're doing good work and we want to yeah. continue to do that yeah. because there's, there's more to us than just one role. Mm -hmm. there's, one, there's more to us than just one show. Mm -hmm. So The Wire like opened up so many different topics and talked about Baltimore mm -hmm. and how drugs and affected how it was and you know just shedding the shedding light on situations that was actually happening and it brought yeah. money to Baltimore by doing the show. Yeah that's true. That's a really that's a really good point. It did. Yeah. So another one of my favorite shows, you guys, you know everybody knows and loves Chris Rock. Yes. So you were known on that show, show too on um, Everybody Hates Chris. Right. So talk about your role and how that role came about. Well it's crazy. Um, I auditioned for the role and um, I actually didn't get the role that I auditioned for. Uh, my buddy Kevante Jackson, he got the role. He was mm -hmm. one of the main bullies. Um, but they liked me and they uh, liked what I did in the audition. They, they knew my work and they said we still wanted to, you know, have you a part of the show. So they created another role for me to, to portray. And um, it was a blessing just because I got came on set and they was knew me as like I said, but not on the wire. So he's like, Yeah, you do do for the wire, this and that. So it was just you know, it was it was amazing. And then I had one episode where Chris Rock actually directed it mm -hmm. and they, um I'm supposed to be stealing this uh, kid's um, lunch money and then I'm eating his peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So he's like, Hey, I want you to take his peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> So being directed by Chris Rock, you know, comedic genius and someone I look up to was just amazing because he was always on set. Yeah. He was always involved. So it just showed me that, you know, this was his baby mm -hmm. and I was just happy to be a part of it. And people yeah. know me from that show as well. So it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, just some incredible experiences. Yeah. And I think when you can stay busy in this industry the <laughs> right. way you have, that shows, you know, just incredible dedication and talent. So kudos to you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean it's so crazy because people always say, "Oh, you're doing so much. You're doing." I, I feel like this. If I'm not doing enough, mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm, if I, 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 I um, like you, you have to do sometimes more than just the one thing because I'm, my, my goal is to help people to, to be able to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not able to do that, then I'm not doing enough. Yeah. And so I feel like I stay in my lane. I'm not jumping outside of entertainment. I'm still staying in my realm of mm -hmm. what I know how to do and what I can do. So if I can do everything with the same passion that I do my first love, then I'm okay. If I stop doing that, then that's when I was like, okay, let me put one to the side and let me concentrate on these other two. Yeah, yeah, and speaking of that, now that you bring that up, you do, you do the acting thing, the music thing, you've done the, the sports. So let's talk about the stand-up comedian yes. guy that we know, because so, that's another you know avenue yes. that you do, and you seem pretty successful at that. Mm -hmm.